So, distinguished guests, it's my pleasure to talk here. So, what I'm going to bring is uh, much more, uh, you know, anger perspective into the whole thing. I am a technologist, so I believe in strongly in technology. So, I will talk about a uh, lot more about technology here. Uh, so, the, I had the company Algo Vision. We are in uh, this business last uh, eight years. We provide the artificial intelligence, the video analytics aspect, the real technology aspects for the entire thing. So today, uh, what we discussed, uh, you know, a lot of issues in the smart policing, and uh, uh, Mr. Gopal Pillai has clearly told that the kind of problems that we face uh, in polices, in the recruitment and other uh, scenarios. So in such respects, what we see is that uh, what where we are going is 100% in the 100%. The 10 percent smart people and 90 percent smart technology. Okay, so tomorrow's world, what we are going to see already, we have witnessed uh, uh, in U.S. the robot is killing the terrorist. Okay, and uh, that has brought force into a whole new dimension in the combat. That today we are using advanced intelligence, a robot which goes there. Okay, has to see. So it has a technology to understand what is the terrain it is, okay, what kind of people are there, and they precisely it has to go uh, to a you know, person where uh, he is there, and uh, it has to blast, okay. So these are the kind of technologies uh, what you know, we have done in the last uh, nine, seven years where the advanced video intelligence for smart policing brings in a lot of aspects in uh, such uh, scenarios. So one of them is uh, in terms of facial recognition systems. So you need to have a clear understanding of what kind of people are there, and their identity is made to be made. And uh, we we need to decide and uh, you know uh, how it has to be used. So one of the examples that I can give you is that in Gandhinagar, smart city surveillance, uh, you know, technology is deployed for uh, facial recognition, which is actually monitoring uh, you know in terms of getting the videos and deciphering who are the real threats, okay? And understanding, and then it is, uh, you know, tied up with the Gujarat State Police database. So in real time, we will be able to, it's all in public places, so it, in real time, we will be able to identify the real threats that are causing, uh, that, are going, that are potentially going to cause issues. So the real time intelligence is the key thing that we need to actually have wherein you know any untoward incidences happens before that itself we should be able to prevent it and that prevention comes by advanced intelligence which is going to detect the threats it may be a left baggage so somebody is leaving the baggage and going out and at that time you need to identify that okay this baggage has to be identified as a someone who is, does not have an owner so for such kind of scenarios again you require a technology to understand it or if you want to protect a perimeter, uh, for example, what has happened uh, in Uri uh, is a intrusion that happened across the border and into the army camp, which has been protected uh, by the people. But at the same time, the technology, if it is assisted by the technology, which is actually using a smart fencing with the sensors and the video analytics to identify and reduce the false alarms. So for example, you can actually use it to identify whether it is a, so today people talked about whether monkeys, can we detect the monkeys, it's a cow, can we detect it as a cow, or can we detect it as a, some other animals uh, or rats. So such kind of the advanced intelligence can be brought in to identify the objects and their types, understand and also their identities, where they are coming from, what kind of people they are, in ethnicity also can be every, every, uh, you know, deciphered using the technology. So these technologies can help in you know, going way in, in solving a lot of these problems wherein we can uh, you know, prevent such kind of incidences. So if, we, if there is for, you know, in such an incidences, so what we can do is that a smart sensor will identify that there is an intrusion, a camera with a video, uh, you know, video with can, can, be, uh, can be processed in the central processor and find out whether there is actually a person who is not among the people who are part of the system. So they can identify 
and immediately give a threat assessment to the uh, central control room. And in the central control room, it can be acted immediately. So this can be 24 bar 7 uh, real-time intelligence, which can actually reduce the kind of uh, threats. So we bring in uh, even traffic ad advanced traffic intelligence systems. So for smart policing, uh, for example, we bring in red light violation detection. So today, it, you know, it has been talked that a lot of deaths are happening because of the real, you know, the incidences on the roads, okay? It's maybe due to the state of roads, what we are, you know, kind of uh, roads that we have, the design of the roads, and along with that, you know, the not utilizing the efficiently the system, the traffic, you know, discipline. The traffic, we are lacking the traffic discipline. In order to get the traffic discipline, it's very important that there has to be a special, very good uh, enforcement mechanism. So in order to get a very good mechanism, you require the technology, and that's where the technology comes into picture. <coughs> if you have a traffic junction, then you have a problem of red light violation detection, speeding detection, right? So, and, and any, uh, you know, uh, the backlist number plate detection. So these kind of things can be put in, in any tra every traffic junction uh, at all the corners or four uh, corners. And along with that, if you have a roadside thing, so you, if you see in the roadsides, if you, whether it's highways or in the, any other city roads, what you today you see a problem of a uh, lot of illegal parking. So today our technology is being used in Singapore government to monitor uh, their, uh, you know, uh, see in, in the city, wherever the car is parked, more than two minutes. So it automatically sends an alert to the central location. So in the central location, they are able to identify, okay, this is the violated vehicle, and immediately they capture the number plate and the channel goes to them. So same way, it can be a, you know, uh, it, uh, you know the, could be a threat to a terrorist also. Where they park the vehicle, it must be knowing a lot of uh, the bomb incidences in, uh, uh, in Bombay, Mumbai bomb blast happened because of the parked vehicles on the roadsides. So unidentified vehicles which are parked on the roadsides can be a very dangerous, and it can be happen everywhere. It can happen in the cities, it can happen near the borders, near the army cantonments. So it has to be protected very well. And the only way, you cannot have 1,000 heights. It's impossible to have 1,000 heights everywhere to keep track of things. Or even if you put the CCC system to get the videos and be able to monitor all of them at the same time is impossible thing to do. So that's when the technology comes to assistance where it automatically detects. So today, if you have a 24-hour footage, the, in fact, and 365 days, the relevant incidences that have happened is hardly could be 15, 20 minutes. But that 15, 20 minutes is going to be extremely crucial for the security of this country, right? So, so those are the incidences which needs to be identified, and that can happen with the technology which can identify such kind of incidences by processing the video and identifying where it is happening, how it is happening, and precisely allow the actionable intelligence to prevent such kind of incidences. So similarly, the crowd management is another main issue. Today we have seen that in the Kashmir, today we have seen that wherever uh, such kind of incident, even in the uh, Karnataka also during Kaveri riots, it's a major issue for the police, how to control the crowd, okay? Suddenly, what they have seen is that a crowd has a different pattern. Suddenly they come and assemble at a place, and within a matter of second, they start attacking, okay? So such crowd assembly needs to be identified and you know, uh, prevented that it's, it's such an incident should not happen. So we have developed an advanced technology where we can actually use that kind of thing, where we can do a crowd management, uh, where it will identify even in the crowd, like hundreds of people, such technology is already being deployed uh, to, uh, in Kumbh Mela and in Pushkaralu to ensure that you know, the crowd, whatever that is the uh, density that is there, is within the limits and is manageable. So the way it works is that you have cameras out there, they will be identifying, if there is immediately a crowd, it immediately goes to the control room, and the control room, the police will be able to really understand, okay, this is an a incidence which is not normal, and they will be able to uh, you know, direct their forces to ensure that such an incidence does not take place. So this is another thing where uh, you know, uh, the technology can help, right? 
So uh, then the number plate recognition where in, uh, you, know, you have the uh, lot of uh, car thefts are happening and the terrorists are using these cars uh, to actually uh, do the attacks. Uh, it may be at the army post or any post. So it could be not, not only the number plates, it's also the importance, like what kind of car it is, okay? What is the color of the car, okay? So all these things we can actually identify using the technology. So if they change the number plate, but if you're looking for a particular color car, a particular type of car, and particular model of car, we should be able to actually you know, identify these kind of things using technology. And this is a technology which is actually rapidly progressing in the last five years, uh, you know, a lot of research has happened. There's a technology called deep learning, which is a, actually a kind of surpassed uh, human intelligence. Today, the humans, if we show the randomly the photos, they can only receive for up to 95%. And if you want to go beyond the 94%, it is actually not possible. But the best in technology is able to actually receive for more than that. So they are able to get an accuracy of 98%. And that is really phenomenal. And that effect of that, you are already seeing in the commercial uh, technology. In fact, the commercial technology is far ahead today. And uh, that may be you know, used by the uh, government agencies in US in terms of how they actually uh, you know, attack the terrorists, how they actually save the, the country. And the same way, you know, I'm actually very much inspired by the talk Mr. Minak Shleki has given, wherein we need to bring in the technology aspects. We need to bring in the made in India based, you know, technology aspects in this, okay? No country is going to help you out in kinds of extreme technologies wherein requires advanced intelligence because in that kind of things, it's a very strategic advantage for them. In order to, for us to gain a strategic advantage, we should be very much self-sufficient in technologies. So today, we have a deep research center where the people from IIT and Indian Institute of Science are working together to come up with technology to ensure that we have the real technologies to meet the needs of the, uh, you know, today's defense, today's police, right? So these are the things which actually we are bringing in the latest technology to ensure that we get the direct benefits in terms of being self-sufficient and, uh, you know, able to actually protect our borders and protect our, uh, you know, cities. So thanks for your time and uh, this